Hayes here at Oklahoma Contemporary, and we are doing another social media tour, this time of Jeffrey Gibson's Speak to Me. So we're welcoming everyone who's here in person and our audience on Facebook Live. Um, and if you are watching live, follow the hashtag OC Gibson because some of these wonderful people will live post as we go through the tour. So I'd like to introduce our curator of this exhibit, Jennifer Scanlon. Oh, okay, and here I go. Uh, welcome, welcome to uh, Oklahoma Contemporary. My name is Jennifer Scanlon. I am the curatorial and exhibitions director here and the curator for this exhibition, which I'm really excited about. Um, Jeffrey Gibson is in the middle of a pretty amazing moment. I'm not even gonna list all of the exhibitions that he's been doing, but I can tell you that uh, just to look at last year, he had a solo exhibition at the Savannah College of Art and Design. He, had, he opened last week uh, a solo exhibition in Milwaukee at Marquette. He is, uh, he's opening this today, and then next week he's going to the Desert X Biennial um, for an enormous installation he did there. He's working with the Denver Art Museum on a mid-career retrospective that's gonna happen in 2018, along with another solo show at the Welland Museum. So he's in the middle of this really exciting moment, and we're so pleased at Oklahoma Contemporary that we can bring him here uh, for Oklahoma City. He actually has roots here in Oklahoma. His mother is from just outside of Tahlequah, and so he grew up um, occasionally coming to Oklahoma uh, to visit family. But in fact, uh, his family didn't uh, live here. They, um, because of his father's job, they ended up uh, traveling all over the world. Um, to places like Korea and Germany and different places in the United States. So he has a really varied background, and we're going to see that as we go through. Um, but one of the principal things he's drawing on here is his Native American heritage. Uh, he is a member of the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians. He uh, is also on his mother's side, half Cherokee. Um, and so these are things, as I said, when he would come to Oklahoma to visit family and go to powwows. These are things that were, in fact, part of his consciousness and his identity um, as he was growing up. And they came into his work uh, in a serious way a few years ago, uh, particularly when he did a project in which he uh, reached out to uh, Native American makers. They didn't self-identify as artists. Um, and started to talk to them and collaborate with them on an art project. Uh, and he became really interested in some of the techniques and uh, materials and incorporating those into his work specifically. So these are all very recent uh, works that we're going to see today, uh, many of which are making reference to that. Um, why don't you come a little closer so that you can come up and see these pieces close up because I think one of the amazing things about the work is being able to see really the, uh, the amount of work and craftsmanship. So I call this exhibition Speak to Me. Um, because uh, it comes from the idea in the video that I'll show you at the end of the tour um, that objects have stories that they can tell us. This is something that came into Jeffrey's consciousness, especially uh, when he did an internship. He studied painting uh, in Chicago, and he did an internship as well at the Heard Museum uh, in their anthropology department, working with um, the repatriation of Native American uh, artifacts and objects there. And he noticed when he talked to elders, Native American elders, they would refer to these objects as living beings. They would say things like they were suffocating in the museum or they were being poisoned. Um, and so that is something that I really was interested in and decided to frame this exhibition to think about each of these objects and the stories that they could tell us. The other place that this uh, comes from, of course, is the text. And if you all turn around, you can see that that uh, beaded panel over there has those words in it. Jeffrey often uses um, text and words in his pieces. This particular panel refers to uh, the gospel song, um, Speak to Me. Uh, I think it appears in the color purple, for those of you who've seen that movie. Um, and he's, uh, gospel music is one of the things that he's interested in. We'll see a lot of different musical references throughout this show. Um, he had both of his grandfathers uh, were ministers, uh, one of them preaching in Cherokee and one of them preaching in Choctaw. Um, so he, but uh, Christian, a uh, Christian religion. So he grew up with um, that as also part of his consciousness. Uh, and the other place that Speak to Me appears is um, on this particular uh, sculpture, this figure here, which 
which um, you might have to walk around to see. I'm gonna let you guys walk around. Um, you can see how it starts on this side and says, speak to me in your words. Um, and then Kayla, can you read what it says on the other side? So that I can hear you. Thank you, we're making this an interactive tour. Um, and these are words that Jeffrey wrote himself. Um, so some of the text comes from his own ideas. Uh, speak to me in your word way so that I can hear you. Uh, it's something that I would like us to do as we uh, go through, think about as we go through the tour um, about what each of these objects is trying to say to us. This is from a series of um, four sculptures that Jeffrey refers to as ancestral spirits. Uh, and as sculptures, they're really very simple structures. They've got the driftwood form, and then they have this beaded panel that's hung over like a cloak. Uh, and for Jeffrey, the cloak is very transformative. Uh, he references um, it as, as in Native American regalia, in which when you put on a cloak, you are transformed into uh, another um, being. Uh, I, there are lots of instances uh, across cultures in which we can think of a vestment or a cloak or an item of clothing that you could put on and transform you. Um, if one that comes to mind immediately is Harry Potter, isn't there a cloak of invisibility? I mean, that's just one of many examples throughout cultures in which you would have a cloak that would transform you. And so this is um, one of the ideas that Jeffrey is working with in, uh, in his figure. He also has um, this great ceramic head. We liked this particular one and, and put it right at the entrance because uh, we thought it had a great sort of grin and smile that would make people. Um, ceramics is uh, a material that Jeffrey has been delving into recently. And let's take a look at this grouping of ceramic heads we have. Um, so you can see all of the various personalities uh, and uh, expressions that he's put into them. Um, here he's making another specific reference to uh, Native American culture. In this uh, instance, the Mississippian civilization, which was a civilization that flourished um, right around, I would say between, I'm not an anthropologist, but right around between I'm at 800 and 1400. Um, these uh, civilization, very sophisticated. The Mississippian culture had a vast trade network. They had, um, very uh, sophisticated forms of agriculture, and one of the uh, um, artifacts that's remained that you can see many places, uh, the Gilcrease, for example, it has some great examples, um, are the pots that were in the form of heads um, with different facial expressions and um, scarification or tattooing on them. So this is something that inspired Jeffrey uh, to create this series of head pots as well. And uh, he said that um, the Mississippian culture um, really has not been, has not gotten the amount of attention uh, within anthropological circles that other civilizations has gotten because it sort of uh, contrasts with a general narrative that uh, before European contact, before Europeans arrived uh, in North America, that there was just vast empty space and nothing was going on when instead there was in fact a very sophisticated culture um, with trade routes that had already been mapped out long before any of the European explorers came through. So in this case, I think the stories are also about stories that are hidden or untold that we have to listen very carefully to hear. Another thing that Jeffrey likes, and you can see this as you um, get a little bit closer, though but we've tried to keep people from getting way too close because these are really um, appealing objects, uh, is that uh, there's a very immediate contact. You can see thumbprints in here. Uh, clay is the kind of material that responds immediately to um, the kinds of your, your physical manipulations of it. It's extremely tactile. Uh, and then of course these gorgeous colors he gets from the glazes. Uh, so he loved this very immediate experience of the clay, which is quite different um, from the experience he had beading. And we'll take you over to a beaded panel next. any questions you have, so feel free to stop me and ask me questions. And um, I'll just say to you, Facebook audience, that if you have any questions, we are in fact watching uh, to see if anyone comments. So uh, someone can relay those to me and I can answer them over the course of the tour as well. Social media, so exciting. <laughs>
So um, this is uh, one of the beaded panels, very large size beaded panels uh, that we have on display. Um, this also has text, uh, what we want, what we need. Um, this comes from a song. Does anybody happen to know what song this was? It's a song. I'm going to say it's, it's not actually a song. It's a, um, it's a rap anthem. Fight the power, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is Public Enemies Fight the Power. So um, this is uh, another uh, genre of music that uh, Jeffrey's really interested in. Uh, he's very interested in house music, rap music, and the kind of the energy that goes into them. Um, this was made in 2015. Uh, for those of you who may remember, Fight the Power came out at the time of the Rodney King uh, beating and the fact that this was filmed, one of the very earliest ones that was filmed and broadcast and uh, really led to um, anger, unrest, and uh, eventually uh, protests and riots within Los Angeles. And Jeffrey saw some connections with what was going on uh, today. Um, so he, he sees this uh, idea of um, promoting social justice and, and pro the uh, through the songs, that's one of the stories that he was interested in telling. I think you can see, and perhaps you noticed when you were looking at the figure over here or any of these works, that the beaded panels are amazing and take all of this um, intense work. Uh, Jeffrey works with a whole group of studio assistants, um, and uh, they uh, he, has, he draws sketches out for them, but they help him sort of execute uh, these very elaborate works. Um, so they've developed a whole system for incorporating text into the panels and uh, for also these other embellishments, the fringe as well. And um, as I said, this, this is the more time consuming ones. You can see why the, the immediacy of the clay uh, and the fact that he does it all himself with his own hands has a great appeal as well. Uh, if you come up a little closer, you can see there's um, a series of arrowheads and different amulets. Uh, and um, some of these uh, Jeffrey uh, got on purpose for the piece, but other ones are uh, from different things that he's been carrying around all his life. Um, so I don't know if you have one of these, but uh, perhaps uh, you have in your life shells or that you've taken from vacations or important trips or perhaps stones that you found um, that have special meaning for you, you just found particularly beautiful. Those kinds of items Jeffrey's been carrying around with him in his very uh, peripatetic life. And, uh, and so he used these on this piece. So it's extremely personal as well. Um, all of these amulets and elbow, uh, emblems of, um, of his own life and the stories that they have, you can think individually for him as the objects you might have in a collection uh, might be for you. Any questions before I go on? Okay, let's go down further. So we have a couple of other um, forms within the exhibition. We have these large figures, of course, um, and then we have smaller figures as well. And these beaded figures actually came first uh, within Jeffrey's work. He was, um, once again, this uh, experience at the Heard Museum was really important to him. He talks about coming across um, an entire village uh, filled with um, essentially dolls. They were small figures um, that within that Native American community were meant to teach uh, children uh, traditional ways. Uh, and so he was very interested in that. And he was also interested in um, the idea of the, the terracotta warriors. Um, perhaps you know in the China, they have found this, um, they excavated a whole army of warriors in clay, terracotta clay, um, that a, uh, an emperor, a Chinese emperor, had constructed for him. Self, uh, which you could do if you're a Chinese emperor. Uh, and he liked this idea of the warrior figure, and he liked this idea of this figure that, that, that symbolized um, kind of traditional ways. And so this was his figure that he came up with. Um, but this figure has um, a number of embellishments that are not traditional, in fact. Um, he has one of the elements that you've probably seen a lot as we've walked through are these jingles. So jingles are um, part of uh, 
the materials used in powwow regalia. So um, they're used uh, for dancers regalia. Jeffrey's using them in a very different way here. Um, he has used them as embellishments that are not the same that they would have been used at all in the powwow. We've got some examples in the back gallery when we go through, you can see the more traditional ways to use it. Here he has created a figure that is, has his own sort of personal ideas and traditions. <clears throat> He's taken materials um, such as raw hide. He's beaded in patterns that are not necessarily um, connected to any one tradition. And for him, these figures are sort of proposing new ideas and new traditions, a new identity. And he thinks about himself growing up with this being an important part, Native American heritage being an important part of who he is, but also being a mixture of lots of different things. Growing up in Germany and, and Korea and that being important, being an artist who's interested in European traditions of modernism, that's an important part of him. So he's presenting this more multicultural, more hybrid uh, warrior figure, traditional figure for sort of a new way forward uh, to express his own sense of identity. Any questions? All right, let's flip around. So this is one of uh, my favorite pieces, I'm just going to say, because uh, it, it dates me. Uh, one of the very first, I, you know, they have that question, that what's the first album you ever bought? Uh, and you, when people ask you that in a magazine, you really want a super cool album to be able to say. So I, I purchased three albums, and um, one of them was Prince 1999. That was my first one, and I like to say that because that's a cool one. Um, but I also got Culture Club at the very same time. The third one you will never know, and I will never tell you. Um, I got Culture Club at the same time. Um, so this is a real example of um, sort of 1980s music. Uh, that was important to me growing up, and Jeffrey talks about how important it was to him. Uh, one of the things that he um, did as a very young man, starting at age 13, was go to dance clubs. And, um, and he found a community there, uh, and he found a place where people were free to express themselves however they wanted. Um, and that became really important to him uh, as he got older. He uh, eventually um, came out as gay, and so those dance clubs became a really important place for him to connect with other people uh, and to uh, express himself in ways that weren't necessarily gender normative. Um, uh, and an early example of someone who could have been an icon for him was Boy George. Uh, if you are as old as I am, then you remember that he, um, in fact, in the 80s when we weren't necessarily talking about um, these ideas at all, he was wearing makeup and clothing um, that really defied uh, uh, expectations of what men and women should wear. So um, these words, uh, the quote, the lyrics that he's got here in time, we could have been so much more, uh, come from a song by Culture Club, um, which was also important to me in very different ways when I was growing up. Uh, and one of those interesting things, apart from the different ways in which people can respond to music that's important to them and lyrics that are important to them, are that once the lyrics have been completely divorced from the music, if you didn't happen to know that song, um, you could read that in many, many different ways as well. Um, you could read it in reference to Native American history if you wanted to. Um, you could read it in reference to any relationship that you had. Um, so it's... Uh, one of the interesting things I find about these stories, while they're extremely personal to um, Jeffrey and are very much about his lived experience, uh, they also are stories that we can all tell and read into according to our own personal context. Um, the other great thing about this piece, uh, which is a great 80s reference, is Jeffrey says the checkerboards relate to his man's shoes from the 80s that he would wear everywhere when he was a teenager. Um, so both of those things are going on. I, yeah, that's a good point. You know, I hadn't realized how many studs there was until we installed these, so I need to ask Jeffrey. I should point out, he's going to be here tonight. I hope that you'll be able to come to the, um, and all of you at home, I hope you'll be able to come uh, to the opening. He, uh, we're hoping that the weather from the Northeast has not created so much chaos that he'll be able to make it here. Um, it's looking good. 
Uh, we have the reception tonight is at 5.30 and we're going to have an artist talk, a Q&A at 6. So you'll, you can ask me that question yourself and if you don't, I probably will because I am curious too about where the metal studs come from. Are there any other questions before we move on? Okay. Um, watch out behind you there. We won't go in here, but I hope that you get a chance before the end to see uh, what started it all. Uh, this is a video project that uh, Jeffrey did. It was uh, during a residency at the Denver Art Museum. Uh, he, you will see when you go into it, he um, invited members of the Denver powwow community to come into the museum and talk to the objects. Um, playing on this idea that objects are living things, that they have stories that they can tell. Um, I found it very moving. As I said, it was really uh, what gave me the idea to think about the objects in this exhibition in the same way as well. Um, so this uh, is sort of a central part of the uh, exhibition. They're through it and there's, um, we haven't gotten it right now, there's a wonderful uh, drumming that, that kind of permeates throughout the exhibition. Uh, hopefully not driving all of my colleagues crazy <laughs> over the course of the four months it's going to be up. Um, and there's a really great, if you happen to know the Culture Club song um, that's referenced on this panel, there's also a really great version of that song within the video too. Um, we'll pass through uh, this other figure, um, which is called the clown. And once again, these are the kinds of figures that um, that show up, uh, the Kachina doll in the, um, the Southwest is one example where it shows up in Native American culture uh, as a figure that's meant to sort of uh, poke fun at authority to kind of make social commentary um, through humor. So this is the figure that Jeffrey has uh, depicted here. And of course clowns uh, appear all across uh, cultures as well. The court gesture is a great example of uh, cloud appearing in uh, medieval European courts. Um, so he's created his own clown figure. Jeffrey's very interested in fashion as well. I think the band's reference is one example of that. And this kind of outrageous, over-the-top fashion that had happened in club culture throughout the years. Uh, so we've got uh, this, this great example of the clown here, um, bringing in all of those elements. And then I wanted to end up taking you back here